Hi, it's Ramsey Dewey over here in Shanghai, China. Welcome to another edition of Q&A with the Coach. Today we have a question from our friend Logan who says, Hey Ramsey, how do we deal with unfair losses? Now Logan's probably talking about combat sports, and I'll get to that, but I'm going to preface my answers by saying life is going to present you with one unfair loss after another, after another, after another. That is the nature of life. Life is incredibly unfair. And as soon as you can realize that it is not because outside forces are putting you in shackles, but rather because you are refu refusing to use and acknowledge the key that you have to undo those shackles that bind you. Let's get straight into combat sports. I will offer you some words of wisdom given to me by one of my old coaches, Mark Brewer. I had a fight, and I'm going to frame this fight with the background, not as an excuse for the loss, but to explain the state of mind I was in. I was up very late until five in the morning, the night before the fight, working. Because I had to make a living. I was what you could call a ham and egg, or a guy fighting just to get food. They were desperate times back then. And I really needed that job the night before, so I did it. And I was not in a great state of mind or body going into that fight being sleep deprived. That's important to understand my reaction later. So I fight this guy. And we scrap a little bit. We end up tumbling on the ground, ending up in a funky human pretzel. And I hear my coach Mark calling from the sideline, reach up, grab his leg, pull yourself on top. I hear his words, I reach up, I grab the leg, my hand lands with a slap on his leg. The referee interprets that as a tap, runs in, calls the fight, and the fight was called as a submission loss. And I, I was like, no! That wasn't a submission. I didn't tap out. And I was about to make this big stink. Because again, I was not in the best state of mind or body going in that fight. And remember, your mind is your body. Your body is your mind. It's all part of the same thing. So I'm about to make this fuss. My corner man kind of backs me into the corner. Doing his job pretty well, right? Living up to the name. Backs me into the corner and says, stop. Don't say another word. If you go out there complaining about this, you are going to look like an asshole in front of everybody. Strong words. I do not use profanity on this channel. But I will leave you with that, because that is how strong you need to feel about this. Life will deal you with so many unfair losses. The fight game will deal out so many unfair losses to you. Sometimes it's going to be a poor call on the side of the referee. But you have to respect that. That's the sport. Those are the rules of the sport. What the referee says is law in the cage. Sometimes it's going to be the judges. Often they'll hire incompetent judges who don't know anything about a fight, who've never been in a fight themselves, who do not understand what is on the line, who do not understand the parameters with which a professional or amateur fight should be judged. But you have to respect that because that is part of the sport. And if you make a big stink calling out the officials on their decisions again. You're just going to look like a jerk. An absolute heel. And not the good kind of heel that sells tickets. The bad kind. Not the people, not the one that people like to pay tickets for to watch fight in hopes that maybe the bad guy loses. No. The type that they don't want to see show up. 
So I held my tongue, and I realized later, not that night, but later, that my coach, Mark, he was right. You make a big stink about that, forget about it. Years later, I went to a jiu-jitsu tournament, and I was watching some of the competitors. And there was this guy, this guy who, he got a call he didn't like from the referee. I don't remember what it was. But what I do remember, and I remember this to this day, and I remember this guy's face, and I remember him every time I go to a jiu-jitsu tournament and I see him. I don't remember anything else about the tournament. I don't remember who I competed against. I don't remember if I won or lost. I don't remember anything about my matches. But I remember this. Oh, he made a stink. He started fighting the referee on that decision. No, that's not what happened. And he started this argument, started this fight with the ref, and suddenly everybody in the tournament just looked at him and glared, and just you could see the looks of disgust on their faces. Like, oh, man, this guy. Get this guy out of here. This guy is, in the words of my old coach, an asshole. Not a word I like to use, but I will leave it there. How do you want to be remembered? Do you want to be remembered as the guy who made a big stink over an unfair loss? What kind of legacy do you want to have? I had a bunch of unfair calls. I had a bunch of unfair outcomes in some of my fights. My last opponent loaded his wraps and broke my skull. Almost killed me. If anything's unfair, man, that is. My first fight in China, man, that was totally rigged, absolutely rigged. Almost every fight on that card was rigged, and that was the situation for many years. Fighting here in the People's Republic, so many fights were fixed. And it didn't matter what you did, you would always lose if you weren't the guy that the powers that be were betting on. And if that wasn't you, you would lose no matter what. I saw a fight once. This dude gets knocked out. But he was the, uh, he was the guy that the, I don't know, whatever organized crime was sponsoring this, this event. He was the guy they were betting on. And so they had the referee wake him back up. Put him back in the ring say, you make sure he wins. He got knocked out twice. And they were trying everything they could to make this guy win. They were giving him breaks. They were giving him a standing eight count in an MMA fight. That should never happen. Standing eight count was abolished in boxing back in the 90s. And they were doing this in an MMA fight, trying to give this guy every opportunity he possibly could to make his Rocky-like comeback and win. Didn't happen. Eventually he quit. He was like, I'm getting killed. Let me out of here. I remember I was sitting at the judges' table judging some fights. I think it was Rebel FC. Yeah, I'm going to throw that name out there. Because those guys owe me money. They didn't pay me. Sorry about that break. I like to do, do these in one take. But um, I'm recording this at home and my daughter needed something. So where was I? Yeah. So Rebel FC, those guys owe me money. And they have for years and they have refused to pay it anyway. There's an unfair thing in life. And maybe I just made a stink. Maybe I just made myself look like a jerk. But I want my money. It's only fair. You make a deal, you promise somebody payment for work, you pay them. That's just what you do. That's what you do in my book. Anyway, so I'm judging for Rebel FC. And this guy comes up, this shady looking guy in a business suit. And he starts saying in my ear, hey, make sure this fighter wins and this fighter loses. Who are you, man? I said. He was like, make, make sure this fighter wins. Okay, if, if this fight doesn't end in a knockout, if it goes to the judgment, 
you make sure this guy wins and this guy loses. He didn't even try to bribe me or anything, man. No threat, no bribe. I don't know. I don't know if um, there were going to be some guys afterward who pulled me aside and said, hey, we need to talk if that judgment wasn't right. But it ended in a knockout. The guy they wanted to win lost by knockout. So I never found out. But man, this shady looking guy whispering in my ear, you make sure it happens. I don't know if he was working for the organization or just some random dude with a bet on the table. No idea. But this stuff happens all the time. Whenever there is money on the line, and in professional sports there is, and there's money for the fighters, but there's so much more money for the middlemen. And those middlemen don't care about you, they don't care about your fight record. They don't care about your feelings. They care about number one and that's it. How do you deal with that? You can do everything you can to try to clean up the sport. I mean, I do. But I think there is an endless supply of greedy, meddling middlemen out there. But let's just say there's an honest mistake. As there was in that fight that I lost, where I reached up to grab the leg and it looked like a tap out to the referee. The referee was doing his job. He was acting in my best interest. He did not know for sure. I guess I should say, he did not know I, I wasn't tapping out. He did not know I wasn't in mortal danger. For all he knew, I may have been, my arm might have been breaking. And so he did his job, erring on the side of caution. That's what a referee is supposed to do. And if I faulted him for that, yeah, man, that's, that's no good. Let the man do his job. I've worked as a referee, and I've had people try to fight me, try to physically fight me over my calls. I did this job up in Beijing, refing some fights up there. And... <laughs> Um, this Chinese girl versus Russian girl. Chinese girl gets on top, gets into full mount, starts landing und undefended strikes, so I jump in and stop the fight. I call it a TKO. And the Chinese girl's coach, I don't know why, but he did not understand that call, and he thought that I had just declared his fighter the loser, even though she had just very clearly, in front of everybody, in the most pragmatic way, won that fight. And I jumped in, pushed her off, waved my arm, said, it's, it's over, it's over. Stop the fight. And yet this guy jumps in the cage. He's like, what are you thinking, ref? And he gets right up in my face. I'm like, get out of the cage or, or you're gone, man. Your fighter just won that fight. Go celebrate. But he was so amped up on something. I don't know. He didn't even understand the call. Weird, right? So weird. And I don't remember much about that event either, but I do remember that guy making a big fuss and a big stink, even when his fighter won and he wanted to fight me. That would have been an, in an interesting fight, I think. <laughs> he was a big dude. Oh, man, never get into fights you're not getting paid for, especially... Especially in the cage, man. So how do you deal with those unfair losses? What other types of unfair losses are there? I mean, there are lots of ways to fix fights. A lot of ways you can lose. Your opponent might cheat. That happens. It's happened to me. And when that happens, how do you deal with it? You learn how to forgive. My last opponent, the guy who loaded his raps, whether intentionally or unintentionally, went on to fight in the UFC. And he fought on the first China UFC card in Shanghai a couple of years back. And I went to see this fight. And I was there in the audience watching my former opponent gets out there to compete in front 
in front of the people of his home country for the first time in the UFC. It's a big moment for Chinese MMA. It's his moment to shine and the audience is going nuts because he's a superstar over here. Former national Sanda champion, national Muay Thai champion, national everything in combat sports champion. Only one loss in mixed martial arts, all of his wins by knockout. And I felt like before that I had forgiven him. But when I saw him fighting, I felt something different. I felt when I was able to cheer for my opponent, who dealt me a raw deal in life, I was able to cheer for him genuinely. and wish him the best and want him to have that positive experience in front of everybody. And want him to be an ambassador for the sport of mixed martial arts and want him to maybe one day even get a title shot partially for selfish reasons so I could say, yeah, I fought that guy. I fought the UFC champ once. <laughs> where I got this. That would be a neat story to tell the grandkids. Don't have any grandkids yet. I've got children. They're way too young to be dating, having children. Anyway. So how do you deal with an unfair loss? You learn how to forgive. And a lot of people get angry when I tell them you should learn how to forgive. But I'll tell you why that's so important, why that's so beautiful. Forgiveness is not letting a bad guy get away with bad behavior. Forgiveness is letting go of all that garbage and all that gunk inside of you that's making you feel bad. It's taking that burden off your shoulders that is weighing you down. Wouldn't you like that? Wouldn't you want to feel better? It's not about making him feel better. It's about changing you. When you forgive, who moved? You. <sighs> Thanks for the question, my friend. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. Thank you for watching. Now get out there and train.